Hey y'all, just wanted to drop in here as we kick off our ninth week of interactive design. Now, in this week, we're gonna focus on building out our design for our apartment complex website in Adobe XD and then porting it over into InVision to create your first interactive prototype uh, for the course. I'm super excited about that. Um, in the video just below this, I go over how to do that, how to export from uh, from Adobe XD into InVision. Uh, Y'all already should know how to do some of the basics as it relates to design inside of XD as you shown as you showed in the last project, uh, project number one. So in this assignment, I just wanted to go over some of the examples. Uh, this video, I wanted to go over some of the examples of project number one that I thought were successful from a UI design perspective, but then also provide an overview of the assignment. Maybe we'll just start there. In this assignment, um, you know, we don't have class on Thursday night. That's a uh, part of the YSU schedule, YSU calendar. Um, and so your assignment for, for this module is due Friday, the end of the week, by 11.59 p.m. And your, uh, your comments, your discussion posts back to your peers then do typically like we've done on Sunday evening at 11.59 p.m. Inside of this module, you've got some great content around the visual principles of scale in UI design. So thinking of things in terms of hierarchy, you know, the biggest thing on the page being the most important, but balancing that with uh, some, some medium size, some normal things, and then also some small uh, things as well. So how do you do visual, uh, provide visual uh, balance within your user interface. You've also got a great video by Rand Siegel about the UI uh, three principles of better web design. So you can go over some tips and tricks as far as the three principles, uh, uh, basic principles of web design. I've also included, I think, a helpful video um, just to see maybe what uh, what you should be striving for uh, if you if you're interested in UI UX design as a potential career in the future. There's a video about UI design in a nutshell. Perhaps what hiring managers are are looking for. Good news is a lot of the same things that we're doing in this class, uh, as far as a portfolio or a case study go, would be the kinds of things myself or others as a hiring manager would be looking for, um, for folks coming out of college, looking to, to grow in a UI UX uh, uh, type of role or position. Also some helpful links around UI patterns and, uh, and also some Career Foundry uh, articles there as well that might be really helpful. Uh, and then I'll go over the instructions here in a second. But let's dig into maybe some of the examples from project number one that I thought worked really well. Talk a little bit about why, uh, and then we'll just go over the instructions for this assignment. So let me start with this one. So I think this is Cassidy with the Skate Zone uh, Fun and Event Center. I spent many birthdays at the Skate Zone there uh, in Austin Town. And what I really like about about this design, this redesign was uh, some of the simple things that Cassidy did. There's a beautiful uh, hero image up here, a great kind of headline as to why you should even care. It's your destination for family fun and events in the Mahoning Valley. So off the bat, if I'm just new to the area or I'm searching for, hey, I want to plan a kid's birthday party or something like that, um, that kind of sets the tone for what to expect on this site. My primary call to action of book now. Also really like, a, there's a strong navigation up here. You got the logo on the top left where it would be expected. Home, plan a party, attractions, groups, contact us. Very basic navigation, highlighting some of the things that I might be looking for as a, as a visitor or as a user of the Skate Zone uh, website. I might be interested in planning a party, what attractions, what other things do they have? If I have groups, what that, that would look like. And then of course, contact us. I really like how Cassidy kept things within a grid. You can kind of see that here. So everything kind of lines up here to the left-hand side, right-hand side, but yet there are objects behind that grid that are breaking it a little bit, creating some interest and some uh, uh, some fun on the actual website. Oh, excuse me. And uh, and you've got that there uh, on uh, with these shapes and things like that that are appearing uh, in the background there. Also, you have a really, she's a really strong footer here at the bottom. So I've got my phone number, address, a little subscribe to events and details, some social media actions, um, and uh, and that's really nice there uh, also. Um, so from the header, you know, top navigation, the, the header area, all the way to the footer is accounted for on this site. Also a really nice contact page. Most of y'all are gonna have a contact page on your site, your apartment complex website. I think this is a good example of one. You got the phone number, the address, and you've got a really nice contact, uh, you know, submit for, uh, form here, um, contact form here, where I can get my name, email, um, how you heard about us, message, things like that. Um, so just overall, really nicely done website. It kind of, it looks cohesive throughout it. Um, I think you could you could build this uh, on a, a CMS, content management platform, 
um, or have a developer build it and you'd have a really nice professional looking website um, for uh, for the skate zone. And again, I really love how we were breaking the grid with photography, but we're keeping things housed uh, within that space with nice margins on either side um, to contain that content and everything from the header all the way down to the footer there. So hopefully it's helpful just to see maybe what some other folks did if you were outside of Cassidy's group um, and uh, and what the skate zones uh, example looked like. Another one uh, perhaps is, is this one. So I think this is Krista, I think did a local uh, church's website. What I really like about this is just how at the very top, again, really strong, impactful uh, uh, message here, believe, belong, become, uh, really nice there. What I love about this is we've contained uh, the content within a grid here also have some margin on either side outside of that container, but each section down the page has specific calls to action. And again, that navigation staying consistent from page to page. We're, we're experimenting with tabs here between weekly and special events, uh, a nice form field here also. So really nice job on this one. Again, really nice uh, navigation area, great call to action. Um, and then, uh, you know, having a, a interesting grid kind of bouncing from from left side to right side all the way down the page with some strong calls to action on each one. Let me jump into another one. So this is Anson with Tabor's Landscaping. Um, I love this uh, because we're playing with, you know, some of the things texture wise that you would expect from a landscaping agency. You have kind of a nice, looks like maybe a, a zoomed in photo of a leaf up here. We're balancing, uh, you know, that zoomed in aspect, again, that, that, that large, medium, small type of balance that the video in this module will talk about here where we have a really strong kind of header area creating outdoor living spaces that fit request to quote today. So I might have heard about Tabor's landscaping. I might have gotten a business card maybe from a neighbor who's, who's using them and I can come to their website and quickly request a quote right here. I have a really strong navigation of home about us, services, portfolio, retail, contact us. Privacy policy maybe could be included in the footer, maybe not something that needs to be very at the very top, but nevertheless, a really nice navigation up here um, as well. As I scroll down, I've got a, a photo section that I can uh, I can interact with, go left to right and, and swipe through. I really like this footer here. So it's a creative way to create a footer. You know, the very bottom, you've got this grass here. So this would be unique to Tabor's uh, landscaping there um, and just creates, has a little bit of content that's helpful there at the very bottom. So here again, we've got, we're just containing our information to, a, to a, what looks to be a 12 column grid with some gutters on either side. Um, keeps that nice and contained in the middle. But again, we're breaking that grid with with large blocks of, of background colors here um, also, uh, which does a really nice job. So again, another, another nice example from project number one. Um, and since we're only focusing on desktop, I thought I'd just zoom in and, and share just the desktop examples here. Maybe two more here. So I think this is Justin. This is the pressed coffee bar and eatery. What I really love about, about this example is how we're balancing really strong, beautiful photography with very strong calls to action. So best coffee bar on campus. Now, there better not be any other coffee bars on campus that come anywhere near pressed. And that kind of sets that, that sets the stage for us is a really great um, uh, call to action there. Sets an expectation that this better be some pretty, pretty good coffee um, here for us. But really nice hero area. Um, and, and then balancing that with some features down the page. Also then a really nice footer here at the very bottom uh, also. So everything from our header, navigation here, homepage, uh, menu, catering, uh, contact us, press reward, some uh, Facebook and Instagram. But again, you can see we're breaking breaking the um, the grid here in the navigation, which is okay to have that bleed all the way to the edge of your, of your browser space at 1366, but then the content is contained within that. So it's a really nicely job, nicely done job here um, as well. Again, keeping that, uh, you know, that the mood board, really strong visual, uh, you know, from a color perspective, using the balance of the colors that were selected as a part of that mood board then really nicely as, uh, as you all set up your uh, design systems or your style guides last week, um, or, or, you know, uh, really would really play into uh, well into that here also, setting up those colors in, in XD and then using them on buttons and things like that. So overall, great job on this on this pressed example. Um, I thought it'd be good to show you this one. All right, our final one here is the Tulip Interiors. I believe this is Macy's example. Um, and again, at the very top, we have a navigation of about uh, contact us, blog, projects, uh, services, and gallery. Uh, really nice logo here at the very top. Um, also, a nice, beautiful photo here um, as well. Um, so again, this is a good, another good example of balancing really strong, large visual photography um, with content here. 
also. So as soon as I come to this homepage, I can jump in to read more about the organization. I can see some recent projects, which would be helpful, learn a little bit about the owner and, and founder and, and know the different services that are provided. And again, just a really nice footer to anchor us on the bottom of the page. Let me jump into a services page. So here we've got, again, a really nice hero section. You can imagine if, as you, if you jump from the home page to services and back, everything's staying consistent as I go through that. Um, I've got, we've got some nice iconography here also that really uh, you know uh, highlights the uh, the cost per hour, um, which is really nice to know uh, as a user to know what I'm getting into before I actually get into it. And then I'm bouncing back and forth between you know uh, balancing left and right content that keeps me visually interested as I go down the page. Now, this kind of bleeds edge to edge. It'd be great if this was in a container or in a 12 column grid area, like this kind of lines up within that space also, but does a really nice job. Um, of, of laying that out here in the Tulip Interiors page. So again, you can see we're, we're visually, uh, we're, we're creating visual interest, we're breaking the grid in areas, um, but we're keeping things contained where we need to as far as content goes. And overall, I think just a really nice example uh, there from project number one. So hopefully that was helpful to see a, a snapshot of, of five you know, great projects from project number one. Um, you know, if you were, were not in the group of any of these individuals to see uh, some of the highlights from other groups, perhaps um, to gather some inspiration as y'all go into designing your apartment finder website for project number two. All right, let's go back to our presentation here and we'll just give it a little bit overview of the assignment itself uh, for this module. So you're gonna be building upon your wireframes in your style guide and now bringing your apartment complex website to life. So also remember your user, the location you selected, the type of apartment that this is, and the inspiration that you gathered in your mood boards. All of those things will be very helpful uh, resources when you start your design. Um, for, for some of y'all, as you, uh, in project number one, I noticed that we had some really strong visual examples uh, as far as the UI inspiration goes, uh, and not quite sure how that ultimately ended up looking uh, as far as your final Mock up your final UI design. So remember back now we've went through our, our mood board, which is a few weeks ago. We went into our IA map, which really helped us with our wireframes. Then we took our wireframes and we, we saw some of the consistent patterns. And so we established our style guide based off of kind of a combination of our wireframes and our mood board. And now we're moving into our final kind of our UI design, our, our layout, our design uh, in Adobe XD, and then creating a clickable prototype in Envision. So as we go into that, leverage your style guide, leverage your mood board as your inspiration, your UI inspiration. Hopefully the combination of all the things that we've done so far make a really informed, uh, make give you a lot of information to go into your final uh, UI and clickable prototype there in Envision. So once again, just to reiterate, we're designing our UI in Adobe XD exporting that into InVision and creating a clickable prototype. And again, the video below this walks through how to do just that. As far as the requirements go for this project, we're keeping it simple. No need to export a, a, a PDF for this one or a package for, for this uh, specific assignment uh, of, of, of UI screenshots there. Um, we're actually gonna be sharing a link from InVision. And again, there's a video down in the actual instructions down below that walk through how to generate those share links um, to share with your classmates. So um, we're gonna be actually clicking into your prototype, experiencing it, um, and it'll be really cool to see what you've done to create your first interactive uh, website, your first interactive uh, uh, prototype there in InVision. So your file type will actually be that share link. Minimum number of pages is six. Some of y'all might have more, but just make sure you meet that minimum of six. From an interaction perspective, InVision provides a lot of cool and advanced and in-depth interaction uh, uh, opportunities for your prototypes. Now, for this project, I'm only worried about making sure that your navigation is clickable. So make sure you hit that minimum. That video below walks through how to set that up, basically. Um, but you're going to do that for all six pages. You can also do that on your... Uh, your calls to actions, your buttons down the page. If it's linking to an interior page, hotspot that item and click in, make it clickable to go into your interior pages. You can flesh this this site these, this site out to be more robust than just the main navigation, but what I'm looking for is a minimum of that. But definitely experiment. Feel free to, to, to learn about InVision, to dig into it, to experiment with overlays and things like that. 
but just make sure you have your main navigation linked up. That way it's easy for your peers to navigate and to experience. And then as we go to grade these assignments, also easy for me to click from page to page and find that out. Your dimensions, you're working on a desktop application or desktop website for, at a 1366 pixel wide um, uh, dimension. So your height's gonna be much higher or much longer than that breakpoint of uh, 768, that fold line. So. The, the width itself, we're working on a desktop only view at 1366 uh, pixels wide. All right, let's go into some of the more particular. So post number one, due this Friday night at 1159 p.m. Again, no class on, on Thursday. You're gonna be sharing your InVision link with your group. So you're gonna build your prototype in Adobe XD, export those screens as JPEGs, bring those into InVision, create your clickable prototype. Uh, and again, the video below walks through that. Your prototype should include a minimum of six prototype screens with a fully interactive navigation. You're gonna add my email, rsfirm at ysu.edu, to the prototype. Again, there's a video, I believe it's video seven perhaps, down in the instructions to walk through how to do that. And then generate a share link that you can provide to your peers. Share your link with your group along with two to 300 words explaining your thinking behind the design and the interactive prototype. Also let us know if you created any advanced interactions there, overlays and things like that. Um, that way we can make sure we check them out and see how you did there. Maybe you learned something new about InVision um, there in that product. Um, and then we'll continue with our same, our same group. I've double checked it to make sure we're good. Uh, we're gonna continue with our same, our same groups for project number two. Post number two, do Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. It's the second required post uh, uh, for, for this assignment, this module. You're gonna give your group feedback, 200 word evaluation. Make sure you're hitting those minimums of two to 300 words or 200 word evaluations important to you for you to be thinking about that critique the the feedback that you're giving uh, and you're gonna do that for each of your peers within uh, within your group all right final slide here so prototype number two clickable prototype is due uh, Friday March 12th at 1159 p.m. post number two due March 14th 1159 p.m. make sure you're giving yourself enough time don't push yourself up to the final you know few minutes to make sure you get this post make sure you're giving yourself enough time for any technical difficulties or issues uh, and uh, that way you're not missing the deadline and it's detrimental to your to your grade there. So um, excited about this, excited to see what y'all do for, for this assignment here in uh, project number two's prototype. Again, if you're uh, a little ahead of the game, what you, what you should be doing anyways is making sure you're building out your, your final presentation package along the way also. So keep that in mind as well. So maybe after you submit your prototype, you have a few extra minutes, go back, uh, start to build out those slides, the same thing that we did for project number one's package we're doing for project number two. So um, that module should be available shortly um, for next Tuesday evening, your final project presentation and package due. Um, but just to kind of Northwind you about that. But for this example, for this assignment, excited about the prototypes. Can't wait to see what y'all do. And uh, I'll chat with y'all later. All right. Thanks, everybody.